So to me, networking and creating connections is the same thing. But for a lot of people, networking is coming to a room with a specific goal and trying to achieve it. And people that are in this mindset are not going to be successful. Great. Marion, welcome to Money Bites. Thanks for having me. Super excited. Can you give two bullet points? One bullet point of your career, just an introduction of yourself, and then a second bullet point on something that people don't know about you. Okay. So the first one is easy. I'm Director of Sales and Partnerships for Techstars, and I'm also the New York City Chapter Founder and Director for Women in Tech. The second bullet point, I eat Nutella every single morning. <laughs> Nice. Just straight from the jar or? Sometimes, not usually it's on a toast. <laughs> love it, love it, love but it. Sometimes I, I, I go straight with the spoon. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Awesome. Well, it has been a really interesting journey for you to get to New York. You went through companies that were big. You went through startups. Would love to talk more about that. But this being Winnie, our first question is, what is your first memory of money? I think it's when my parents gave me pocket money when you're a kid. I think that would be my, my first memory of understanding what money means and that it's not something you earn easily. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you make that connection? that allowance was not something that you can easily get? Um, I think it's because my parents wouldn't give me a lot. And they explained me that instead of giving me what I needed for buying clothes and, you know, buying my food and so on and so on, they just gave me like a little bit for buying gifts for myself. And mm -hmm. that they would pay for, for the clothes. So they would still like own the decision of uh, when they would buy clothes, when they would buy, you know, snacks or, yeah. I love that. So <laughs> money sort of equated to a sense of control for you then. Yeah, I guess. Do you think that has changed or impacted your current relationship with money? I don't think so. I think I've always been very careful about my money. I never, you know, acted like a spoiled kid. I, uh, my parents were always gave me whatever I needed. And I was never, you know, I didn't grow up like in a poor family or whatever. I was, I had a comfortable life, but I always had like the value of money. Like I know what money means. And I know that not everyone can afford to live in specific places or to go on holidays or to go to the restaurant. I always had a, a very good understanding of what money means that's amazing and at what point did you sort of go into the world of tech you, you didn't actually start off with tech you started off with uh, the media industry right yeah so actually I started to get interested into tech before getting into business school I had to prepare a project of what my resume for the next 10 years would be. Uh, that was one of the exams for getting into one specific business school. And I was a really big reader at the time. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't really know what was at there. Uh, and just because I was a big reader and I liked the book industry and the, the media industry in general, I started to just get more information about it and read about it. And at the time, they were talking a lot about how specific, uh, you know, like iPads and Kindles would, would change the, the way people consume reading. Uh, and that's what got me into tech. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And I remember reading something about how in Japan, kids and grown up were already using their phone to read the news and read books. And at the time, it was something completely new. And, and so that's what getting me into tech, because then I started to get like fascinated by what tech can bring in terms of value and how it can, it can give additional content on a, for a book, for example, like you can, you know, check the translation or you can check synonyms or at this time that was like almost 15 years ago, they were talking on how you can integrate images or, or videos into an electronic book. So that's how I started to get really deep into that. Love it. That's super interesting. I just want to go back one point about a 10-year plan. Did your life sort of yeah, now was super hard. your plan? <laughs> I would imagine. Oh, yeah. That was really hard because you just fresh out of high school and you have to imagine what your life is going <laughs> to look like over the next 10 years. That was very tough. But yeah, and but I understand why they, why they did it because it was really interesting to think about 
what your resume is going to look like, like what your career can look like, what your hobbies can look like as well. I remember actually I put down uh, as a hobby that I would run the New York Marathon, which is not a project anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that was an interesting exercise. Love it. You know, they talk about visualize it to materialize it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you saw a glimpse of the future with what was happening in Japan that got you into tech. And the next yeah. step was you went into a completely different role, sales. Yes. Yeah, so I actually started as an intern. I didn't really know what sales meant at the time. I was just looking for a role into tech and actually applied for a newspaper, a French newspaper that is really famous called Le Parisien. And I thought it was perfect because it was like achieving my, my dream, my dream as a child to work for the publishing and all the, you know, the media industry while working on the tech side. So I didn't immediately think thought about what the sales role would be. It was more about the industry. And my role is actually in, in partnership. And so I was working on the, the website and I was managing the, the commercials on the website. So I was working with the social media manager. I was working with a lot of different people in the digital department. And that was that was really great because I got exposed to a lot of different types of technology in web marketing at the time. Uh, and he helped me to yeah, get a sense of what internet is and can do and also find out about, you know, all the, the behind the scenes. So that was great. That's really interesting because both the way that you got into media and then this position, it seems like you're quite an early adapter in terms of grasping to ideas of what technology is able to do and you just jump into it. Yeah, I didn't really think. I mean, I did think <laughs> about what, uh, what my first internship would be. Yeah, I didn't ask myself too many questions I and I'm super curious. And I think this is a, a big quality for being into tech. Because it's always, always evolving. Uh, and I can get bored easily. So I think this matches my <laughs> personality really well. And that's how I, I also got into IT rather than just web marketing. Because I was I was so interested into better understanding how it works. That I was uh, sitting down uh, next to the, the different people in, in the digital department. And I was asking them, can you please show me how you do this? Can you please show me how you do that? What is the code? How do you change this? How do you change the link? Wow. Like all those little things. And I, I never actually learned how to code, but I was just interested into understanding how it works. Did you enjoy uh, being a sales representative? Yeah, I I didn't realize at the time that I was in sales because uh, for me, I was just, you know, talking to people and uh, <laughs> making sure that they were happy and providing them with reportings to show that uh, the, the French newspaper where I was working was better than the other newspaper. But, you know, at the time, I didn't realize that this is actually the definition of a sales job. <laughs> I just didn't didn't know what it was. So I didn't have like any preconceived ideas of what a sales is. I didn't really look at the, the title. I just look at the, the job description. And, and that's that's why I chose my, my first internship. And then from your internship to some of the other positions that you had, it jumped into business development. How did yes. you do that role? Yeah, so um, to me, everything is kind of the same, like sales, partnership, business development. It's all about creating connections, building relationships, creating intimacy with the, the customers or the partners, uh, and making sure that there is mutual respect uh, and finding the sweet spot. So um, again, it's not something that I, I told myself, like, oh, I love business development. It just happened to be <laughs> the concept that is behind all the roles I've been having so far. It's more linked to my personality, I think, and to the type of job I was interested in to, rather than finding like a specific title. You wanted to enter a different industry. Was it what attracted you to make the jump? 
Yeah, so I've been in sales for like five years before making the jump to like partnership role. And uh, I really liked being in sales because I like to, I like the adrenaline of closing a deal and I like, uh, you know, building some things from scratch. And yeah, just like the last weeks or days <laughs> before you close a deal, always very exciting. Uh, but I wanted to have like um, a more strategic view. And to me, the partnership role seemed like the perfect combination between what I liked about being a sales and having a more strategic overview. So um, I was in a startup at the time, a post-series B startup. I was a sales there and because the company was growing so fast, I knew there would be opportunities for me to develop my career de there, which is also why I decided to join a startup rather than staying in a large company. And that's something I've been very open about with my manager uh, that I'm very thankful for. And I, I told him, I told him, look, I, I like to be in sales, but I don't want to stay in like pure sales my entire career I would like to explore other areas and and so it was really open about it and then six months later an opportunity came up and uh, and the the chief revenue officer decided to put me on on the partnership role which was a, an amazing opportunity because it was still like in sales because you still have to talk about the solution you have to build relationship you have to convince someone that your solution is better but it was also a completely new role in a sense that the job was still different than being in pure sales because I had to build connections between between Microsoft and the startup I was working for. So I kind of had to convince both sides <laughs> that they had to work together, which was like a new angle that I never had in sales. Interesting. I want to double click into how you got into that role, because I, I think that's super important. You know, we call it managing up, having your manager get buy in and invest in your own career, not just your manager, but potentially like leadership, you said the chief revenue officer, etc. Mm -hmm. How did you have that conversation and convince the managers and leadership that they should look out for you, that you are the appropriate person for, you know, whatever new role that came up? Yeah, so it's something I didn't do in the very first job I had when I was working at Cisco. I never asked for what I wanted because I... I don't know if I was too shy or I was like, you know, expecting my manager to just guess what I wanted to do or just to put me where I would be good at. And I've seen, of course, a lot of my coworkers being promoted and and getting specific jobs. And it's because they 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 required it. So they they ask in advance. And that's something that I, I never did. Like uh, when I was working at Cisco, I never anticipated long enough mm -hmm. that I would be that I wanted to be in a role within a year. So um, when I started the, this new role at the second company I worked for at this startup, I told myself, okay, <laughs> starting from scratch again, this time. I'm going to speak up and I'm going to share what I want to do. And even if it's not, I want this role at this time on this specific industry or with this specific customer, starting the conversation with just say, hey, I know I don't want to stay in this role forever. I know that I still want to work for the chief revenue officer in the sales category, but not being a sales is still like something that helped your manager to think about the different opportunities. And the conversation I had with him was like, what do you recommend I should do? And what, what would be the opportunities within the next six, six months to one year? Because mm -hmm. um, I also told him, like, I don't want to leave right away. And I was just, uh, I was six months in my job. So my intention was not to change uh, so quickly, but just get a sense of what, what else was possible uh, regarding my skills, regarding my expertise and regarding my past experiences. Uh, and that's a good conversation I had with him. It was like uh, explaining me a little bit about what the strategy was, what were the potential departments that would that would uh, hire and is the one that told me I should actually talk to the managers. Not to say, hey, I want to be in your team, but just like, hey, I just want to better understand what your role is and what's your vision for the next year or two or three years and get an understanding of what the, the, the job would look like, what type of profiles they would expect to then think about it and then think on how I could like shape my day-to-day -day job to make it a good fit for being in partnerships uh, later. So 
So that's, that's what I did. I discussed with uh, different managers and I kept being a sales, but be, because I was interested in partnership, I started to add partnership components in my role. So I started to be more vocal about, oh, I'm developing a partnership with this company. or Oh, I know we are going to sign a partnership with uh, this other service provider. I actually going for lunch uh, just to better understand what they do. And I started to incorporate elements of what my next role would be in my day-to-day job. I love that. It, I feel like it's such a good example of luck coming to those who are prepared. You gave two amazing tips right now. So one is be proactive in sharing your intention to your manager ahead of time. Like don't say yeah. I want a promotion or what yeah. <laughs> right before, you know, the announcements are made. Usually, you know, headcount, et cetera, are made months in advance. So make sure you give your manager enough time to incorporate that. And the second point that you made, which I think is super smart is don't just share your intention with your manager, like manage up to the other leadership in your org as well. That's a great, great advice. I I'd love to piggyback off on that. So you've not only changed careers in roles, but as you said, you, you joined a startup, you joined a variety of different companies. Would love to hear your thoughts on, because when you think startup, you have to assess the risk. It, it yes. is more risky than a mature company. So how do you assess risk? Do you have any like internal criteria that you use? Yeah, I think there was a lot of criteria that that I had at the time when I made the move from moving from a large company to a small, smaller, much smaller <laughs> company. I really wanted to change. So I looked at other large companies that were kind of like Cisco, like in IT, with like a, a role that was a bit similar. So I looked at VMware, I looked at IBM, I looked at AWS. And what I did is that I leveraged my network and I contacted co-workers that were working at Cisco that left for going to VMware or AWS. And I also leveraged my network of uh, through my business school. So I reconnected with people I, I didn't see for like two or three years. And I just tried and I didn't know if they would answer, <laughs> but they did. And then I had like a casual conversation with them about why did you leave? What is the difference? What is your day-to-day job? What is the vision of the company? Where is the company going? How do you see yourself in two or three years? So of course, in a more <laughs> casual way and more like mm-hmm. in, a, in a discussion, but that's what I had in mind. And because I was able to build relationships with them before in my day-to-day jobs when they were working at Cisco and when we were in business school together, it was really easy for me to ask those questions in a very open way. And for them, it was also very easy to, to answer and be completely transparent. So I think that's my number one recommendation is that reach out to employees that are working at those companies and see what is their mindset and what the day-to-day job look like. And n- not all companies are for everyone. So there are people that won't feel comfortable ever in a large company and just want to work, to work for startups. So the risk is also very depending on uh, your mindset and, and what, you, what you call a risk. So I think, yeah, I think it's very important to, to get feedback from the field and then also get feedback from partners or customer that worked with the company you want to get in because they have they have a they will have a different angle and I think that 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 is really important to to have a different angle from different people and then I've also a feeling like so, some uh, some discussion also about a feeling like I, I went through interviews and the company looked great and and the employees looked happy and so on but when I had my first interview, I just didn't feel comfortable because your manager is also very important. It's a lot of little criteria for, for me uh, to assess the risk. One of the things that I'm very inspired by you is you seem very natural at networking. And also mm-hmm. in your current role, it just seems to come very natural to you. But for some folks, it's not. It's it's really hard to network. And mm-hmm. You also don't want to give off the impression, oh, I'm reaching out to you just to ask you for a job. (laughs) Um, Any advice on how to be a good networker while 
getting the information that you want from the person? Yes, uh, for me, it's it's about creating connections before networking. So to me, networking and creating connections is the same thing. But for a lot of people, networking is coming to a room with a specific goal and trying to achieve it. And people that are in this mindset are not going to be successful. I heard a couple of people coming to my events and be like, well, I couldn't find a job tonight. So I don't think I'm going to come back. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it doesn't work that way. You're, you're not going to find a job uh, when you go to a networking event. Or if you do, you're super lucky, but it's not going to happen this way. You're going to create a connection with someone that will appreciate you. And then you're going to be able to build this relationship. And then eventually this person will hear about a job that would be a good fit for you or will hire someone in, in her team and think about you. But I think that to be efficient when you network, it's to really be authentic and and really look into people for who they are, whether for their social status or the company they work for. And I really believe that you can learn from anyone and everyone can bring you something different. So maybe you're going to go to a networking event and you're going to talk to someone that's coming from Costa Rica and you are planning a trip there and you don't know where you want to, where you want to stay or what to, what to do in Costa Rica so that okay it was it's not related to to job but it still brings you something or maybe you're gonna connect with someone that's currently looking for a job and actually happened to me like I, I connected with someone that, that was looking for a job at the time she didn't have a job and we just started to be friends because we share a common passion about food <laughs> so we started to connect it on that and then we went for lunch together and then she happened to find a job at one of the largest banks in America. And now maybe she will be a potential customer or a potential partner or even find a job in her team that is growing over the next six months. I didn't know that when I first met her, but because I was able to create a genuine connection with her based on something we have in common, then the trust is here and it makes it easier to take the next step about, oh, let's Let's uh, make business together or oh, I'm looking for, for a job. Can you help me? So I think this is really important to, to understand that and, and, to, and also think about what can you offer to people rather than what, what can people bring to me. So, and I, I have let a lot of students coming to my events and I tell them, don't, don't say you're looking for a job. Just ask questions. Tell them that you just graduated and you are just trying to understand the tech ecosystem rather than saying, hey, I'm looking for a job in, in tech. It's like the, the first step is first to understand and what type of job you can do, what what is out there, what a, what the market looks like. And that's a good good first step to, to have this type of discussion with people. And then within the conversation, maybe those students will realize that actually tech is not for them because they don't find any interest or maybe they're going to find out about a new industry that's coming up or maybe, yeah. So it just, it's all about being authentic and creating a genuine relationships. <laughs> I love that. I, I also love, so authentic connection being one. I also love what you said at the end about don't close opportunities. You just never know what might pop up. So just be open and receptive. Yes. Absolutely. And I think actually the best way to network is when you don't need it because ah. you don't need anything. So you just, you can be yourself. You can be just casually talking about whatever you want. You can talk about your work. You can talk about your hobbies. You can talk about a lot. And when the day comes, you, you're not going to look opportunistic because you already built this connection when you didn't need it. It's very similar to money, like how it's a bit easier to earn more money if you have seed money <laughs> versus yes. if you're just starting from scratch and you really need money and it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's true super cool want to jump over to how you moved over to new york you moved countries you moved jobs yeah. Can we go back to what you mentioned about taking calculated risk and how that has played a role in your career trajectory? Yes, absolutely. So um, I moved from Paris to New York in September 2022. Uh, the reason why I moved is because my husband sold his company to an American company 
and had to be relocated in New York to work for the company that it was acquired from. So I had to quit my job. And when I moved to New York, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I applied the <laughs> advice I, I give to students. I get an understanding of the ecosystem. I tried I started to make connection. I also built my community by starting the New York City chapter of Women in Tech. And then I started to get interested about the VC ecosystem, which was something completely new. Of course, I heard about VC because I was working in a post-Series B startup that then became a unicorn. And while I was there, uh, there have been two series. And so I was exposed from the inside of the impact of a VC. But I didn't, it never crossed my mind that I could actually work for a VC. And just because it's an industry that I was not familiar with, I didn't have friends working there, no family working there, nothing. So I started to get more interested about that. I took like online lessons. I started to listen to podcasts, talk to people about how they get themselves into VCs, if they had like some newsletters, where I could find jobs. And that's that's how I got, that's how I heard about Techstars and that's how I applied. I, I was not recommended by anyone. I just applied, which sounds crazy. Even for me, I was like, oh, I will never find a job if I don't know someone there. Mm -hmm. So when I applied, I didn't I, I didn't know what to expect because I'm like, yeah, it does, just doesn't work that way, I felt like. But it worked. And because I took the time to really customize my CV to make it very relevant for this specific role uh, and to fill up the, they had like a couple of questions. So I, I I took my time to answer to these questions and being just authentic, I didn't overthink it. I just shared my experiences without trying to build a fake character because it never works. And then I I, I got a, I got a positive feedback from the HR and then I leveraged my network so I got a, a positive feedback from the HR and then I reached out to someone that was working at Techstars saying hey I have a first call can we talk <laughs> so and that's actually what I've been doing uh, during my entire hiring processes is I tried to leverage as much as I could whoever was either working with Techstars or working at Techstars and so I reached out to a woman in in Germany that was working for Techstars because we were from the same business school and I didn't know her. <laughs> it was completely out of the blue, but I reached out to like five people on LinkedIn that were from uh, my business school and working with Techstars and she was the only one that answered me. And then it happened that- uh, Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have to try because worst case, people are going to say no. <laughs> But I tried and I was really determined to get the job. So I did whatever I could that was in my power to to augment all the chances to to be hired and get a maximum of information and leverage those contacts as much as I could. I find this super inspiring. I mean, it must have been scary to come to a new country without something else lined up. And you just being tenacious and being open and authentic to find a enter a completely new field that's wow that's yeah. <laughs> quite something yes yes it was it was not easy it looks easy now because you know we see on LinkedIn all the posts and it's going well and so on but people don't see the struggle the like I I didn't know what I wanted to do and it was really really tough not knowing what I wanted to do not knowing which direction to take and yeah it was a uh, but it's an interesting journey and you'll learn a lot about yourself and that helped me to build a lot of great connections. I started the New York City chapter of Women in Tech, which helped me to get more grounded in the New York tech ecosystem. And it's all about trying. And I didn't know that I would end up uh, working at Techstars. I, did not, I didn't know I would end up filling up a, a rooftop with 300 people just six months after starting the New York City chapter of Women in Tech. I, I didn't know any of that, but I just kept trying and 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 just being resilient and again, building those connections and leveraging connections and trying to show people my value and, and my creativity, it, it paid off. But when you are in the middle of it, you don't realize that it's only once it's behind you that you're like, oh, wow, I did all of that. <laughs> Pat yourself on the back. That's that's quite amazing. <laughs> As we wrap up, how has been your experience in New York? Are you enjoying it? 
Yeah, I love it. I love the networking culture, obviously. I think to me, it's very easy to to meet people. Uh, the mindset is completely different from the French mindset, which is fun to learn as well. And yeah, it, it just... There was so much happening in New York all the time. I love how diverse the, the city is, how all those communities are all staying in the same place. And it's it's such a fascinating city. For those who are just starting or in the exploratory phases, like where you were, and they don't know where to start, any resources you might recommend to start off with if, if they want to be more open and network more? I think the very first platform I used was Eventbrite. So I just looked down Eventbrite with some keywords, tech, obviously, <laughs> woman in tech. But just starting with Eventbrite. And then the second advice I would I would give is to just put yourself out there and not be afraid to ask questions. A lot of networking events I've, I found out are because I ask people, how did you find out about this event? Which event are you going next, next week or next month? How often do you do that? What do you recommend? So that's how I found about the next networking events I attended. I found out about newsletters uh, that I didn't know were still a thing. <laughs> I, I, I found out that Twitter was still a thing in the New York tech ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> so it's by just talking to people and asking them and asking the same question to like 10 people and getting like eight, eight times the same answer. I was like, okay, I'm going to go back to Twitter then. <laughs> So, so yeah, I think that's, uh, I think Evan Bright and then going there, asking people questions and, and also not be afraid to leave if you don't feel comfortable because there were, there are so many communities in New York that if, if you go to a networking event and just doesn't go well for some reason, it's fine. There are plenty of other communities that can be a good fit and it's okay to just come to a networking event, take 15 minutes and then leave if, if you feel too shy or not ready. But I would recommend yeah, just giving a try and be resilient. <laughs> Love it, love it, love it. Final, final question. Who are you looking forward to networking with next? I was about to say Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> me too can i uh, can i be added to the wait Why list <laughs> Why not? <Michelle>. Love that. <laughs> yeah i mean you know we are in new york united nations are are here so that's a that's a crowd i haven't tackled yet politicians uh, and i'm sure there are plenty of opportunities to do so so yeah I man why not <laughs> i love it i love it's a new it. challenge yeah. <laughs> Not that okay. I want to be in politics, but just I think it's a fascinating environment and be exposed to it. So it's interesting. <laughs> Another example of your amazing curiosity. All right. <laughs> so when, when I see an update on either Twitter or LinkedIn of you at a dinner table with the Obamas, <laughs> remember this interview. <laughs> you <can> get... <laughs> Love it. Thank you so much. It was so fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed our conversation. <laughs>